Happy New Year 2019. Pretty excited about what's going to happen this next year. Well, we're going to do a recap of 2018 when we come right back. Okay, and so what we're going to talk about is uh, we're going to recap on 2018 and what we have done in PEC and, and how things have worked. And we're going to talk about what we want to see happen in the next new year. And so, first off, I want to thank all the new ministers that joined us since we became the bishops. I started being the bishop in, um, uh, on the 26th of January. 2018, uh, and um, in February was when we launched this campaign to rebuild uh, PEC back to what it was. And so we at one time were sitting about 500 ministers, and when we took over, there was about 14. And so uh, now we're almost hitting 60 now, and I'm pretty excited about what God has done in the past year. And so, uh, in February, right when we uh, had gotten everything set up and got everything moved to Moses Lake, we the first thing we had done was set up a, a website to promote PEC, uh, put information on there for our ministers, and um, hopefully get it out there so people could find us. And it has worked really well. In February, we the first ministers we licensed were Larry and Pam Prentice. They are... Uh, number one, their family, that's my sister and her husband, and they are the regional directors for uh, the northwest of uh, Washington State, and they live over in Bremerton. And then we um, brought on Daniel and Elizabeth Kegel from Moses Lake. They run a, uh, they are in children's ministry in their church, and they really felt the call of God to be licensed, and so we did that. And I'd also enlisted him to the National Guard, so that was pretty exciting. In March, Parker Teal came along, and he uh, tried to get in the National Guard, but he had a medical issue that uh, life just handed him. But uh, the neat thing is, he still has a heart to serve uh, in some way, and he's working in youth ministry in our church at the Moses Lake CMA. And he is also licensed, and he's the youngest one we've licensed. And so uh, then in May, we brought on uh, Barbara Waldrop from Arkansas, her son Brian, and his wife Twyla from Oklahoma. They live just kind of across the border from each other. We got a chance to go down and see them. It was a really neat trip. We went to Fort Smith, Arkansas, where this all started, and you can watch the video on that. And then, uh, in the same month, we uh, credentialed Paul Guffey. I've known, I've known him since he was just a, uh, a tiny, tiny child, and he has yet served, since then, served in the military, and he's out, and he worked with di disabled homeless vets on the west side of Washington State. And then his father, Hayden Guffey, uh, came back to us after he had been in PEC back in the late 90s. He lost contact with PEC. And then um, uh, he found, uh, he watched one of my videos and decided, uh, told me he was been part of PEC and was ordained. And we reinstate that ordination. In June, Ray Villarreal was a, a member in fellowship, uh, became a member in fellowship. He's not a minister, but he has supported uh, PEC. PEC financially, and so we made him a member in fellowship with us. Um, and we had some returning members in uh, June. There also Dr. Edna and Martin Overstreet, and then we had Dr. Rich, Richard and Amy Hutzel came on. He was the uh, bishop back in 1998 to 2012, and then uh, uh, Patricia McCarty came back, and we got reconnected with her. And then we also had another minister that is licensed through the Assemblies of God, but she's a member in fellowship as well, and her name is uh, Reverend Kimberly Fitzer, and her mom and dad are uh, Doug and Ramona Fitzer, which is our uh, vice president and regional uh, superintendent of Eastern Washington. And so uh, then um, new ministers that we had come on was Lupe, uh, Hernandez, he runs a homeless ministry here during the summertime in Moses Lake, and then during the wintertime he goes to California and helps run one down there. So um, a lot of neat things that happened up to that point. 
And then uh, in July, we had uh, Zuma Ibera, Ibora, I can't pronounce it, but she's actually from the Philippines but lives in Hawaii. And she had been with PEC back in the early 2000s, and um, I sent her a letter, and she uh, came back to us. And so we are in fellowship with her now. And then in July, we had uh, David and Anna Bachelor, Anna, excuse me, Anna Bachelor, Belcher, excuse me, and then Nick and Amaris Longmire, they're, uh, uh, David and Nick are brother-in-laws, and they run a church in Chelan, Washington, which is uh, um, central, um, kind of north, and uh, on, on the eastern side of the state. And they, uh, they have a church called Christ Center Church, and there are PEC ministers from there. Then in September, we licensed, this was pretty exciting, we licensed Brian and Tara Clare. And they are actually, uh, Brian is actually the great-grandson of uh, Reverend Seeley, George Seeley, which is one of the founders of PEC. And then um, uh, Richard Hutzel had married Amy Seeley, which she was is the daughter of um, George Seeley. And so Brian Clare's got several family members, uh, a long history there, dating back from when PEC started, and, and he decided to come on and continue that family heritage, so it's pretty cool. Um, and then we had Jerry Marino as a returning minister, used to be with PEC back in the 90s, and he's in California, he's come back with us. And then uh, in October, we had Mildred Jose, and she used to be with PEC back in the 80s, when she lived in Bremerton, her husband was in the Navy, and then when they got stationed out in Florida, they lost contact until the, she had looked on the website and found us and wrote me a letter, and then she uh, was reinstated, so we're really happy to have her. And then in November, we had uh, Karen Noss was referred by David Belcher, and, he, uh, and so she is a licensed minister, and she lives in the Wenatchee area. And Wayne Chase is a returning member uh, after many years, and he lives on the west side of Washington State. And then his uh, grandson, uh, Kyle Chase, is going to work with his grandfather, Wayne Chase. And uh, he uh, got all his paperwork together, and we're, we're working with him. And he started out as an exhorter, and he's going to be working in his grandfather's ministry with him. And that in, in also in December, we brought on... Um, Jennifer McDonald, and she is actually from Inniat, Washington, and so we're really excited about having all these new ministers. Well, yesterday we received another application on the 31st of December, and uh, that was from Dennis and Robin Brothers from Shawnee, Oklahoma. So right up to the end of the year, we had all these new ministers come, come on, and if there's anybody I miss, please forgive me. But we had quite a growth this last year, and I'm expecting in 2019 to have another big spurt of growth there. And so um, God gave us exactly what we could handle. And I'm praying and hoping that because my duties with the National Guard are going to be a little bit less than this year, that he will grow that. Now, I'm still going to college. i got one, one year left before I get my degree. Um, but I know that... Uh, things are going to continue to grow, and one way we've been able to grow was with our website and our YouTube videos. We put out over 40 videos, and one of them is how to be a licensed minister, and that's gotten over 640 views since it came out, and so that has brought uh, people our way, and I'm praying that that continues to be an avenue for people to find us. And so we're also going to be relying on y'all for ideas. One of the things that I've done, and I, I did this book in about three weeks, is I wrote a book called The Gospel Tidings. This, the, the name of this comes from the monthly publication I put out every month that's been coming out since about 1938. And um, The Gospel Tidings has, has little articles in it and the things to, to think about. And so what I had done is I put a 52-week devotional together. And so if you would like to get a copy, they're only $15, and that includes shipping. And there's about a $3 profit that goes back into PEC. So 100% of the profits go to PEC. I wrote all the articles for the most part. And, um, but I, I will not be taking a dime for this. This will be 
to help build up and send out letters to churches and to create something to help um, move PEC along. And so uh, if you all have any, any other uh, ideas, please let us know. We'd love to hear them. Um, for this whole next year, I want you to be praying about four, four areas for me. Number one, we need to pray for our country and our government. Uh, it's in quite a situation. And so we need to pray for our leaders there and uh, pray that God will have his hand on them and lead them in the way they should go. Be praying for PEC. PEC turns 83 this year, and I want to see it continue to grow. Uh, continue to pray for our ministers and everybody that is working in ministry out there. And then also pray, um, say a prayer for my family. Uh, health and welfare and my retirement's coming up, and so I'm pretty excited about that. So a um, lot, lot of things to be praying for, and uh, I'm going to continue to do videos. This is just our start, and uh, we're going to pick up from where we left off with the uh, going into the seventh seal, so we'll be watching for that. And God bless, and have a great new year.